Hey everyone, I'm Daniel from the Clo 3 d Munich office in Germany. In this tips and tricks video, I want to show you how to create custom top stitches. In part one, we will focus on a simple sequin top stitch and in part two, we will focus on a more advanced top stitch with coins. So let's get right into it. For the first part, we want to create a very easy sequin top stitch that looks similar to the one in this picture. First, we need to create the sequin that we want to use in our 2D window with the ellipse tool. We will create a sequin that is 5 mm in diameter by simply clicking with the ellipse pattern tool from my 2D toolbar in my 2D space and putting in the exact measurements we want. Then we want to create another ellipse in the middle with my internal line ellipse tool that is 2.2 mm wide. We are going to right click the internal ellipse that we just created and click convert to hole to actually have a hole in the center now. We will change the particle distance to 0.8 in the property editor for these small objects to get the highest possible vertice count. Also, I want to change the fabric thickness slightly to 0.2 millimeters. After this, I want to zoom in on the sequin in the 3D window, select it and tilt it a little bit to achieve a kissing effect like you see in kissing buttons on a suit jacket. To do that, we want to duplicate the sequin and place it a little bit higher in the 2D window to see if it works when it's repeated. This can be a little bit of a back and forth process until it repeats perfectly. After we have a perfect repetition, we can delete the duplicated sequin as we don't need it anymore. Now that it fits nicely, we can have a look into our UV editor. Here we want to place our pattern piece in the middle and enlarge it with a little bit of space around. Our simple sequin is done, so we can already export it as an OBJ. For this, we click on File, Export and then OBJ. Select a name and click Save. We want to export our sequin with thickness, so we have to check Single Object, Thick and Unified UV Coordinates. An image size of 1024 pixels is enough detail for us in this example. For the sides, we will put 1 mm at fill texture seams. You can see that our fill texture adds in the hole and on the edges of our sequin. That's the reason why we left a little bit of space around it beforehand. Then we can click OK to export it. In our top stitch section in the object browser, we can click on the default top stitch. In the property editor of the existing top stitch, we scroll down a little bit to shape and click on the little plus icon next to it. When the new window opens up, we want to load our previously exported OBJ under file and change the axis conversion to Y, Z up and X. Be sure to invert the Z axis. In our preview window, we can now see how it will look. Then we click OK to finish. To change the fabric type, of our new top stitch, we go to material type and select iridescent render only. If we wanted, we could also change the colors and other things in the effects settings below, but for this example, I will leave it as it is. Now that we created our custom top stitch, we can test it. For this, I'm going to create a new fabric and create a simple rectangle in my 2D window with an internal line on top. I will also change the particle distance to 1, so our internal line is showing smoothly. Then we will select our top stitch tool in the 2D toolbar and apply our top stitch to the internal line. When we have a look into our 3D window, we can already see how it looks like on our rectangle. Remember, the iridescent effect will show only in the render, so in our 3D window it will show only in white. The last things we want to change are the offset, Z offset and space between the top stitch. For this, we will go in the property editor of our top stitch and change the offset to zero and the space in the specifications to minus 0.1 centimeter. Now our sequence are on the line and the negative space settings gave us the kissing effect we talked about earlier. For the Z offset, we need to select our top stitch tool and then our top stitch on the internal line. In the property editor, we will change the Z offset to 0.01 so the sequence lies directly on the fabric. 
Now I will tilt the whole fabric a little bit just to get some better light reflections in the sequence when we render. Finally, we can go into our render and see in the render preview if everything worked out for us. Now we can also see the iridescent effect on the sequence. If we would render our image, it could look something like this. After we finished, we can of course save our custom sequence for the next project by going to the top of the property editor of our top stitch, click save, choose a location and click OK. For the second part, we want to create a top stitch that consists of two coins that are arranged a bit differently and have their own textures. First, we need to create the two coins in our 2D window with the ellipse tool. It will be two centimeters in diameter. We'll set the particle distance to 0.8 again for the highest detail. Then we want to bring in the two coin textures that I chose and edited beforehand. We will drag and drop these into our graphics section in the object browser. By selecting both, we can also create a normal map from the existing textures by simply setting the intensity slider to 1 in the property editor. This will give us a little bit more realism. Next, I will drag and drop and fit my images to the two ellipse pattern pieces we just created. For even more realism, we want to have our textures on both sides of the fabric. After clicking the textures with our texture tool, we can then select both to change it. If we move around our coins in the 3D window, we can now see the textures on both sides. In the fabric section, we will duplicate the default fabric first then change both material types from fabric mat to metal and decrease the roughness to match our textures. We then want to change the color to something close to the textures as well and change fabric thickness to 1 mm. We also want to change the curvature on the edges, so we need to select both ellipses with the transform pattern tool first and then change the side curvature to 50%. This will flatten the edges instead of being very round. Next, I want to work on the arrangement in the 3D window. I will tilt and move the coins a little bit to achieve the kissing effect like we did with the first sequence. We can test if the repeat works by duplicating the coins and when we finish, we can delete them again. This can be a little bit of a back and forth process until it repeats perfectly. To get the textures correct, we need to prepare our UVs in the UV editor. After enlarging, we want to place them with a little bit of space around for our fill textures. Last step of creating the coins is to export them again. We will check the exact same properties as in the first part and click OK. After exporting we can create our top stitch again by clicking the default top stitch in the top stitch section and clicking the little plus icon next to the shape options. In the new window we import our coins obj and set the axis conversion to the same orientation as before, y minus z up and x. One thing we want to change here is going to our property editor and change the material type to fabric shiny. This will give us a little bit more reflection. Now that we created our custom top stitch, we will test it again. For this, I'm going to create a new rectangle with an internal line on top. Then I will go into my top stitch tool in my 2D toolbar and apply our coins top stitch. When we zoom out in our 3D window, we can already see how it looks on our rectangle like before. The last thing I want to change again is the offset and space between the top stitches. For this I will go in the property editor of the top stitch and change the offset from the internal line to zero and the space between the stitches or coins in this case to minus one centimeter. For the Z offset we will select our top stitch on the internal line and change it to 0.01 millimeter as before so the coins lay flat on the fabric. Now that we are done, we can preview our result in the render preview again and render it if we wanted to. I did my rendering beforehand, so it could look like this. Finally, as you already know, we can save this top stitch again for another project. 
And that's it. There are, of course, so many options on what you can create with this workflow. From different shapes to different materials and with the option to import your own OBJs, there's almost no boundaries on what you can create with it. So I hope you enjoyed this tips and tricks video and you can tell us in the comments if it worked for you. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.